like to thank you um, and the fine folks at PennDOT for addressing public safety concerns on Interstate 83 and for you stepping up to take care of that by the summer. I'm very grateful. Thank you. So I want to talk to you about the Mount Rose Interchange. Uh, speaking of Interstate 83, I'm sure that as a former legislator yourself, you can certainly empathize. We had a major interstate project that was over budget and three years delayed. Um, this, that specific project is still under active litigation, so I understand that you can't comment specifically on that front. However, the issue still remains, um, and I have some legislation that still looms. Um, the prior administration uh, was not receptive or helpful in what I would call um, simple common sense legislation. So if you can do a Google search uh, that raises a red flag for the taxpayer on these entities, why does it not trigger some sort of alarm, review, pause, when the state is reviewing a potential contractor for a project? And, and the way I simply put it is, and this may be a little blunt, that if a company showed up as a potential candidate to replace the roof on your house and you did the bare minimum amount of homework, you wouldn't let them come up your driveway, let alone climb up a ladder and get on your roof. So, Mr. Secretary, how do we stop the bad actors that clearly have a proven track record, like the contractor that was awarded the bid for the Mount Rose Interchange from being awarded future projects in Pennsylvania? Uh, Senator, uh, I look forward to your legislation and having a chance to review it in, in detail. Uh, at PennDOT, as you, I suspect, know, we have a pre-qualification process for contractors. And if a contractor clears the hurdle with respect to pre-qualification, then they are eligible to be considered uh, uh, you know, for projects such as the Mount Rose project that you're highlighting. Uh, and I know of the challenges that existed with respect to the delivery of that project uh, and the imposition of liquidated, liquidated damages by the department in an effort to uh, respect the taxpayer's investment with respect to that firm. So. It, what your the core of your question gets to the pre-qualification process that exists for contractors that the department does business with uh, and uh, you know absent your legislation before me uh, I'll simply say that we look forward to looking working with you to see if there's a way uh, that uh, prevents the kind of scenarios that uh, I think we could all agree uh, should be avoided well I really appreciate that and I think my constituents will really appreciate that as well um, they had to drive through that project's for six years and uh, you know our gas tax is one of the highest in the nation and our projects like this one are delayed and cost more um, than we were promised um, that's a big issue for all of us I think so and this brings me to my next issue um, when Henry Ford came out with the Model T everyday Americans were able to buy them but the nation did not subsidize the build out of gas stations. The market took care of that. So today we're seeing millions of dollars in state grants going out to build out EV charging stations, tax credits to purchase these vehicles. And what we know is that these electric vehicles, they weigh more than a gas vehicle, and I would argue they're putting more wear and tear on our roads and bridges. Um, yet, as a follow-up to uh, the chairman's question, our motor license fund does not collect a similar amount from EV um, vehicles. So your counterpart at DCNR is installing charging stations in state parks and offering free uh, charging for visitors. We all know nothing is free. And this is money that is not going back into that motor license fund to pay for infrastructure improvements. The average gas driving vehicle owner based on the numbers we were able to see, is paying about $300 more a year than an electric vehicle owner into that motor licensing fund. So as the state continues to subsidize charging stations, EV vehicle fleets, and more, my gas driving vehicle owners feel like the target on their back is growing uh, by the day. So how do we get parity between those vehicles? 
first, uh, uh, Senator, I'd offer that the, the uh, electric uh, charging stations that are envisioned uh, by the department uh, is the usage of federal funds that were approved in the IAJA. Uh, PennDOT has received roughly $60 million for the charging station build out on the interstate network, uh, and then the remaining $100 million that we'll receive over the final three years will be all federal funds that will be advanced toward the, the electric vehicle charge out, uh, build out that you're describing. So the subsidy isn't necessarily state funds. These are federal funds that can only be used for that. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that, and I think you appreciate that as well, but they're not paying into the motor licensing fund when they, when they charge those, those vehicles. So I think we need to work to get to at least parity um, because our needs in terms of repairing and replacing our roads and bridges um, certainly continues to grow. So I'll look forward to working with you on that. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Acting Secretary Carroll. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman.